Have you ever asked an AI something and it confidently gave you the wrong answer? That's what we call an AI hallucination. And guess what? OpenAI may have just figured out why it happens and more importantly, how to fix it. Welcome to UTCI Studio, AI powered, creativity fueled. Today we are diving into their new paper that could change the way we trust AI forever. Stick around and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss the next big AI breakthrough. All right, let's break it down. OpenAI may have just solved hallucinations. They just put out a paper identifying the root cause and even suggesting a fix. And when you hear the reason why models hallucinate, it's going to sound obvious. According to the paper, language models are known to produce overconfident plausible falsehoods which diminish their utility. It sounds right, but it isn't. If a model confidently gets something wrong, it's hard to trust it. But where do these hallucinations actually come from? About pre-training issues. The paper stated, the distribution of language is initially learned from a corpus of training examples, which inevitably contains errors and half-truths. However, we show that even if the training data were error-free, the objectives optimized during language model training would lead to errors being generated. This means when we train a new AI model, we assume the massive dataset has some mistakes. But here's the twist, even if you had perfectly clean data with not a single mistake, which isn't even possible, hallucinations would still happen. That's because models don't just learn facts, they learn the distribution of language itself, which means they can generate fluent sentences that look correct even if the content is wrong. So the problem isn't just the data set, it lies in the training process, specifically in how the model is taught to judge what makes a good or bad response. That's where hallucinations really come from. Core insights. It is stated that, questions of the form. Is this a valid language model output? Generating valid outputs is in some sense harder than answering these yes or no questions, cause generation implicitly requires answering, is this valid about each candidate response? Here the paper highlights a key difference. Generating correct answers is much harder than checking if an answer is correct. Think of it like this, if I give you an answer and ask, is this valid or not? That's usually straightforward. But if I ask you to come up with the answer from scratch, that's much harder. Why? Because there are countless wrong answers, but only a few right ones. Producing the right one is far more difficult than simply validating it. In real world analogy, if you think about how you probably use LLMs, this makes a lot of sense. How many times have you asked a question, got back an answer that was clearly wrong, and then when we said, no, that's not right, fix it. And the model immediately replied, oh, you're right, let me try again. That's why multiple agents working together often produce better results. One generates an answer, another reviews it, and the outcome is usually stronger than a single model guessing on its own. Why does this matter? This shows hallucinations aren't just random bugs, they're part of how today's models are built. But that doesn't mean they're inevitable. For instance, let's consider an example of birthdays. It's area where models hallucinate. If a model only sees a person's birthday once during training, it won't reliably remember it. Ask about it later and it will probably just guess. The paper highlights this with data. If 20% of birthday facts appear only once in the pre-training data, then base models are expected to hallucinate on at least 20% of those birthday facts. About post-training and guessing. So what happens after pre-training? This is where post-training comes in. It's meant to refine the base model and reduce hallucinations. The paper states, the second stage, post-training, refines the base model, often with a goal of reducing hallucinations. But instead of simply saying, I don't know, models often guess. Why? because they act like students taking a multiple choice test. If you guess, you have a chance of being right. If you leave it blank, you're guaranteed a zero. Models follow the same logic. They'd rather take the risk of guessing than admit uncertainty. And that's the crux of why hallucinations continue to show up. Bluffing and overconfidence. In the paper stated, students may guess on multiple choice exams and even bluff on written exams, submitting plausible answers in which they have little confidence. So yes, it makes no sense to leave a multiple choice question to answer. So it's not just guessing, but rather bluffing. Just like students who write down a plausible sounding answer they're not confident about. In both settings, guessing when unsure maximizes expected score under a binary 0 to 1 scheme that awards 1 point for a correct answer and none for blanks or I don't know. And here's an example. Bluffs are usually very specific. Instead of saying sometime in autumn, a bluff looks like September 30th. 
That level of detail makes it sound confident even when it's wrong. Benchmarks reinforce this behavior because they're graded in a binary way, right or wrong with no reward for honest uncertainty. Humans, on the other hand, eventually learn that it's better to admit uncertainty. In real life, confidently giving wrong answers hurts credibility, while saying, I don't know, or giving a rough guess is often more respected. Models don't get that kind of feedback, yet. Quick question, would you trust an AI that admits, I don't know, or do you prefer one that always takes a guess? Drop your answer in the comments, I'm curious which side you're on. The fix. The ultimate reason models hallucinate is because we haven't been rewarding them for honesty. Right now, there's no way to say good job when a model admits, I don't know, or when it gives a rough but cautious guess. The paper makes an important distinction that hallucinations are inevitable only for base models. Many people argue they're unavoidable, but that isn't true. Imagine a model built from a simple question-answer database plus a calculator. If you ask it, what's the chemical symbol for gold or what's 3 plus 8, it gives the right answer. But if you ask it something it doesn't know, it just says, I don't know. That's non-hallucinating by design. The very simple solution and core idea of the paper is that a model should answer only if its confidence is above a threshold, let's say 75%. Otherwise, it should say, I don't know. We can train models to do this during post-training. But here's the catch. Most benchmarks today don't encourage this. GPQA, MMLU Pro, Math, Swebench, all of them use binary grading, right or wrong. The only exception is Wildbench, which actually gives credit for saying, I don't know. This is what the paper calls behavioral calibration. Instead of only looking at probabilities, you test whether confidence aligns with accuracy. For example, when the model says it's 50% confident, is it right about half the time? When it says 90% confident, is it correct 9 out of 10 times? That's how you tell if a model is behaving honestly. Reinforcement learning problems. Now let's look at figure 2 in the paper. This shows a critical issue. Base models can sometimes be well calibrated. When they say, I'm 70% confident, they really are right about 70% of the time. Aim for 30% and so on. But after reinforcement learning, things shift in the wrong direction. Reinforcement learning often teaches models to bluff. Suddenly, a model might claim 80% confidence but only be right 45% of the time. Why? Because reinforcement learning pushes models to be more helpful, more decisive, and sometimes more confident than they should be. And even when we add reasoning tools, search or retrieval, hallucinations don't fully go away. The root problem still has to be solved at the reinforcement learning stage. How to fix this? Rethink how we evaluate models. Right now, benchmarks don't reward honesty. So how do we fix this? If you're a benchmark creator, you should add confidence thresholds and actually reward models for abstaining when they don't know. Here's one simple scoring system. For a correct answer, give plus one. For I don't know, give a zero and minus one for a wrong answer. This way, wrong answers are penalized, but honesty isn't punished. Early signs in GPT-5. The exciting part? GPT-5 is already showing signs of this shift. Check this out, a Twitter user shared GPT-5 responding with, I don't know, thought for 34 seconds and answered a short answer, I don't know, and I can't reliably find out. Even Elon Musk chimed in, calling it impressive. And honestly, wouldn't you rather get that than a confident hallucination? Other research. This is not first time that we have heard of this. Anthropic researchers have also explored hallucinations, but from a different angle. They found that models tend to build momentum once they start answering. Think about it. The model wants to finish the sentence neatly. It wants correct grammar, proper spelling, and a complete thought. Stopping midway or admitting uncertainty feels unnatural. Anthropic described this as a symptom of hallucination. But unlike OpenAI, they didn't pinpoint the root cause in training objectives and evaluations. That's interesting to see both the AI giants try to attack this issue from their perspective. So here's the big picture. Pre-training, hallucinations happen because generating correct answers is harder than checking them. Post-training, benchmarks encourage bluffing instead of rewarding honesty. And the solution? Change the incentives, fix how we grade models, fix how reinforcement learning is applied, and encourage models to say, I don't know, when they're uncertain. Because the future of trustworthy AI may not be about always having the right answer. It may be about knowing when to stay silent. So hallucinations aren't just random glitches, they are baked into how models are trained and graded. But the fix might be as simple as rewarding honesty. This is UTC AI Studio. 
If you found this video helpful, hit like, share it with a fellow AI enthusiast and subscribe. Don't stop here. Check out my playlist on AI tools, the latest news, tutorials, and even hidden hacks you can try right now. Until then, keep learning, keep building, and keep creating with AI. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.